the rules have changed. There's a lot of weird cheap debt in the market. People are able to take profits. The banks run the show. I want to be positive. I'm a positive person. But this is a grim situation and it looks like a freight train going down the road with no brakes. What's up everybody? I hope you're having a great day and today I got to come to you and just kind of like throw my mind out here on the internet. I've been battling through the trenches here in real estate for about two or three months, both selling off my properties and helping others buy houses. And I got to vent to y'all. And, and if you read the title of this video, you're probably wondering, is the housing market going to crash? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you my opinion on whether it is or it isn't or what my thought is, my line, because I'm going to come at this both as an investor and a person that is helping first time home buyers and regular people, you know, needing a real estate agent for whatever they're buying and selling. And uh, there's a lot of things out there that I don't think a lot of people are thinking. And, and, and the rules of the game have kind of changed, okay? Since the cough cough, you know what I'm talking about, and the, the new administration, new tax laws that are coming in, a lot of the uh, rent moratoriums, landlords versus tenants, and kind of like, it's, it's crazy out there, y'all. So we're gonna talk about that right now, right here in this video. Let's get to it. So this was the very first house I bought with my YouTube money and started my rental property business. This is the uh, second house, rental house I ever bought, but first one I bought with my YouTube money. <laughs> it's been rented for three years, fixing to go inside of it and see what kind of craziness is inside of it. Because of COVID, nobody's been able to go in it or the management company has refused to go in it. All right, so if you haven't been following along with me, my name's Jack. Yak Miley, I do crazy stuff, I buy houses, I flip houses, I go fishing out on the big waves and I, I do a lot of fun stuff, random videos just because I like to make videos. And if you're wondering, is the housing market going to crash? Well, I'm a guy that has invested a lot of money in the real estate market, so I put my money where my mouth is. I'm not just some real estate agent out there with zero properties, no corn in the crib. I'm a dude with a semi-big hat that has done some deals, both as an investor and a real estate agent. So let's talk about what's going on in the market. So is the market gonna crash or not? Well, yes and no. Follow along with me on this. See, I happen to be here on the Gulf Coast where there is a massive inventory shortage and there's a great migration of people coming from up north to down here. See, I get calls probably four or five times a week saying we're selling our house up north. COVID, cough, cough has kept us from being able to do anything, and we wanna move down there to Florida where things have been open, the economy's bustling, things are going on. So that has caused a semi-craziness to go on in the market where we are here in Pensacola, Florida, one of the greatest little secrets. Hashtag Pensacola, prettiest beaches in town. Okay, so if you toss that in with the hurricanes, just destroyed a ton of properties along the Gulf Coast, and Panama City still hasn't actually recovered, and uh, most of Louisiana still hasn't recovered from those hurricanes. Uh, we have a, a bunch of broken houses, and we have the virus has really crushed the economy in a lot of places. And then we have a great migration from people from New York, California, uh, Michigan, North Carolina. A lot of the northern large metropolitan areas, they're kind of wanting to come down here where it's sunny, housing's cheap, you know, they can just start a new life. So that's kind of painting the scene of what I'm trying to talk about today. And so let me talk about the investment side, okay? I started selling off my properties right when I kind of started noticing the new administration was gonna come in. And no, we're not gonna do any side left, right politics. This is just talking about the money side and the real estate side. So when I saw the election, kind of gonna go a certain way. I knew that new tax implications were gonna come into the market. I didn't know if 1031 exchanges were gonna stay, which is a staple of real estate. I didn't know if passive deductions were gonna change. I didn't know whether we were gonna see any new tenant laws come in, and if we were going to maybe have a, an extended rent moratorium, okay? so. With that being said, the money game on rental real estate has kind of changed. I don't know if these things actually come into play for the next three to five years or whatever. The rental income game, in my opinion, is going to be tough. You're going to have problematic tenants wanting to say that 
you know, they're losing their jobs. And, and I'm not trying to not feel heartless about this. I'm trying to just kind of talk about this. So they're going to say, well, I can't, this is what I'm dealing with right now. I can't go to a um, hotel so you can fix the property because then I got to be quarantined and then I'll lose my job and then they'll come back and sue you for losing the job. And, and so like, like, Tenant laws become and tenant uh, evictions super like it's it's such a hard concept right now that the idea of money making business of rental income at least in my opinion right now has become harder and there's other places to put capital so when you have a rent moratorium and they're not collecting collecting rent and you can't evict that means I can't pay plumbers I can't pay lawyers I can't pay insurance agents I can't pay the things that are going up because inflation is. I want to say inflation's happening. They just printed $8 trillion, so things are changing. The money line has changed in, in real estate, and, and I'm very interested to see what happens. So I'm dumping my properties. They are at an all-time high value-wise. I'm going to take my profits because bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. I'm not going to be slaughtered in this market. I'm taking my profits from my rental properties, which is going to be well. I'm going to pay my capital gains on them. I'm going to sit back and watch. And this brings me into the next portion of what I'm trying to say is the market going to collapse. See, there is a supply and demand problem right now in the market, like right now. I think there's like maybe 100 houses, probably not even that, in the 150, 175 to 225 kind of price range here in Pensacola. And, and if you think about that's the whole city. Everybody coming here, that's how many price, properties there are. And of those, how many are broken, will pass inspection, will actually be... Uh, VA, FHA, mortgageable, it just dwindles down to, from there to the point where CMAs are almost out the window. You're trying to like say, what is this property worth? And an appraiser is trying to appraise it and you're trying to talk to a bank. Well, the CMAs, like uh, what the, the market value of, the, of it is in, in, the investor, or in the buyer's eyes and the bank's eyes, is they're so so all over the place because the prices are going up so high. So what you have is you got a guy sell a property on this side of the street and it, and it gives you a comp. And then the other guy's like, well, I got one over here, so I'm gonna jack the price up over here. And then you just keep chasing this up because there's so many people putting in offers. They're waiving contingencies on, on appraisals. They're, they're throwing cash. They're paying above market and, and then throwing in cash. And then the, I mean, like I'm seeing properties that are 130,000. The bidding, people stop bidding at 160 because you know, that's how little there is for people to move in here. There's, just, there's no building really like creating new spot or new houses and the old ones are crushed from the hurricane or they got leaky roofs and they haven't see my see my my thought process here. It's 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 becoming like a very weird situation. All right. So breakdown light doesn't work. I just destroyed the floors in here. Like how do you destroy vinyl plank flooring? Like look at the cracks in it. Bugs everywhere, but not too bad. Got to lay new floors, which I thought this stuff was indestructible. Uh, the carpet wasn't too, too bad. I haven't cleaned it. Uh, air conditioner unit, tenants never put bleach down it, ever. They never changed the, uh, never changed the filter either. So I think this will continue to happen as long as interest rates stay low and there's a lot of availability for money. FHA, VA, and, and, and first-time home buyers and, and conventional loans being loose enough to where they can throw these cheap loans at these properties and uh, it's really inflating the market. So now let's take the other side of the aisle here. We got forbearance, okay? And I don't think a lot of people understand like how forbearance works. Do some people escrow everything, okay? They escrow their taxes, their insurance, and, and they just keep pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off to the point where taxes have to be paid. And it's the same way with the landlord. When you stop allowing him to take rent checks or not, or, 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 or have a, a, a tenant there that's not paying, taxes still have to be paid. Insurance still has to be held. Now you're thrown into a situation where a homeowner uh, has pushed it back three months, four months, and his, he's not paying anything in the escrow. Like the, the, the bank might be saying, oh, you know, we'll, we'll shove it off to the back end. Well, the state of Florida and the county tax appraiser and the city and all, they want theirs. And you got to still cough up that. They're going to start falling into this situation where there's back taxes and then 
forbearance and let's say they go to sell the house at the closing table and they owe three, four months back on this mortgage, that bank's not, they're going to have a closing problem. They're going to get stuck here upside down, not be able to get out of the property. It's just going to be one of those situations where they need eight grand to get rid of a property they got to get rid of. And then for the people that think that the equity in their house is going to save them, well, I don't think that's going to happen either. Why? Okay, follow me along with this. I'm getting there. That's what the bank wants. <laughs> they, they want the equity in your property. They take the property. They take everything. You get nothing. They keep that. And they just made money. That's how banks make money. They want to foreclose on you. <laughs> they learned from the last crisis. So they are going to snatch that equity out from underneath you. Keep it. Thanks for playing. Keep that 8, 10, 20%. They're going to put that property back out there for sale and do it all over again. It's just a circle of debt. It's like a, it's like a revolving saloon door. Because, yes, people are unemployed right now. I don't care what the CNBC money unemployment data says. For like most of the people, under, I think there's like a 20% unemployment rate of people making $40,000 or less. And that goes back into my investors category that you're having uh, tenants that just can't afford to be there. And, and now your business model of having rental income suffers because, I mean, even to screen a tenant, you have to worry about, is, is their W-2 current? Did they lose their job last week? Well, if they did lose their job left last week, now what are you going to do? And, you know, cash for keys and all that, all that costs money. And when you're relying on other people for a business, it becomes hard. So switching back to the regular homeowner um, that just lost their job and they still have to pay escrow and the mortgage and, and catching back up and now they're unemployed or one of them's unemployed and they're getting that measly $600 stimulus check and the worst part about it is in a lot of places of the United States, not here in Florida, you're not allowed to work. Like you can't open up places. And that's just it's so frustrating. But I, all I know is the answer. I don't have the answer for that, but I do have, know that if money is not coming in, that forbearance is gonna lead to a humongous inventory of foreclosed homes coming on the market. And that is what the investor side of the house is waiting for. They're going all cash, they're blowing out of houses, and they're at the highest price that we have seen in a long time. I mean, things you bought for $50,000 last year are $100,000 now, $105,000. Things you bought for $100,000 last year is gonna sell for $175,000, $200,000. You know, I'm just being dem demonstrative here, okay? So if you think about it, the investor has the interest to sell, Okay, for a home buyer is barely hanging on and the economy is going to echo for three to five years. At, 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 it's going to echo for a long time. General waste, a lot of generational wealth has left the building. I know people that invested in bars and when they shut the thing down, that two million bucks gone like that. The government shut you down. And that blows my mind that people allowed that to happen. I don't know what the answer is, but for somebody to work their entire life and then the government insert themselves in the contract between A and B and then everybody lose everything. But that's, this is, that's my opinion on the real estate market. The rules have changed. There's a lot of weird cheap debt in the market. People are able to take profits. The banks run the show. And you know we're relying on these 30 year fixed rate mortgages to just ride us out into the sunset until we pay these houses off. But we never thought we, weren't be we wouldn't be allowed to work. And so if you can put all these things together and kind of figure out in your head, where's the market going? I mean, I can say the same thing about the stock market. There's 8 trillion fake dollars in that stock market and those prices are inflated. Just like the housing prices right now are inflated because of a bunch of cheap debt. Okay, so that house that used to you could get for a hundred thousand all day long is 175. Now, 20% of all the dollars pretty much ever created in the United States were created in like the last year. I don't see it coming back down. I think it, I think of this as inflation.
things cost more now. I mean, comment down below with your thoughts. These are just my opinions. I think we're seeing the beginning of inflation, like serious inflation. The only way to really hedge that inflation is by owning property and assets. But um, I'm more nimble with my money. That I don't, I'm not just going to put it somewhere and that's it. I'm going to be in and out, 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 looking for deals constantly. And I think that's the way you got to be now. Lazy money can't operate anymore, especially if we go to like 40% capital gains. Taxes will be higher in the future than they are now. And that's why I, I, I get frustrated with an IRA or 401k. I know y'all are going to hate on me on that, but that's just my opinion. You got to be active with your money now. And in real estate, you got to be active. And the prices have gone sky high and they will retrace back down a little bit. But I don't know here on the Gulf Coast where I am, they will actually retrace that much. I think we're in it to win it, y'all. Let's see what y'all think. Comment down below. I hope my thoughts make sense. I had to put this out there. I want to be positive. I'm a positive person. But this is a grim situation. And it looks like a freight train going down the road with no brakes and a herd of cows on the road. So I'll see you guys next time.